Hey everyone, Alex Corey here with CultivatedChange.com. Hope you're having a good day. Today I wanted to bring you my version of a microgreens masterclass. There are plenty of them out there, but I wanted to aggregate all the information that um, I was missing when I started uh, first producing microgreens on even a small business scale. Uh, so this video will be comprehensive for my process on both a seven and 10 day cycle with microgreens. Um, and I'm gonna use the term microgreens to mean any baby vegetable grown up into its first true leaf. Some people just refer to cotyledon as microgreen, uh, and some people start calling a green a macro green after its first large true leaf kicks in. Uh, for my context, depending on the variety, I consider a microgreen any stage after a sprout, that is once it's exposed to light um, and before the elements of the mature plant kick in. So once it, when it still has that um, tender baby texture, uh, more than two weeks, it, it starts getting all dicey. Some of the herbs um, will, will drift into uh, macrogreen territory, but for this video, seven to 10 days is my cycle. My longest crops maybe are two weeks, but we're just gonna do the common varieties since that's what um, people have been asking for and what most people will be growing uh, just for bulk food cultivation, just to give themselves a little more uh, nutrition in their diet. And that's what the, the cheaper seeds are. So we're gonna go through the um, five biggest varieties. Uh, I use True Leaf Market for all my seeds. Mostly, 90% of them come from True Leaf. I have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, we're gonna do brassicas, and I'm only gonna do the two most common ones, the easiest ones that I use, red acre cabbage and uh, broccoli, uh, about the same density. We're gonna do um, black oil, organic sunflower. We're gonna do, uh, I use speckled pea. You can use any pea. Um, Austrian winter pea is fine too, but I like speckled pea. Uh, and wheatgrass, another super popular one for people juicing, and a radish. Most radishes are the same. I'm gonna use red arrow because I found that to be the most uh, robust for all of my mixes, and it definitely grows the quickest, maybe comparable with a daikon. But we're doing, um, we're gonna have more than just seeding and um, putting under lights. So we're gonna do probably a multi-day check-in. I'll show you all my seeding procedures. The seeding will be broken up into two days. Uh, I do a seeding on Tuesday for my seven-day crops and a seeding on Thursday for my 10-day crops, uh, just because that's the way I, I harvest. It's winter right now, so I have one harvest a week, one big harvest uh, and delivery. Um, all of these procedures will apply to if you're growing next to a window or if you're growing in a greenhouse. Uh, the timelines might be a little off and the textures will be a little different. They might look slightly different, but everything else is the same. Um, and this will be done in a coconut core mix. Um, a lot of people use peat or hydroponics with like a coconut core burlap. I like soil because it is uh, has the most buffer. Uh, you can go up to two or three days uh, before you start having drastic consequences. Um, so if you're ready, let's get started. First two are gonna start with require the most preparation. Some people do this for pea as well, but I've never had a problem. Um, this is for sunflower and wheatgrass. Um, both of these have a fungus on the seed hull, or can have a fungus depending on your batch. This is an organic black oil sunflower and a hard red winter rye. Uh, these are what I've found to be just the most reliable for timeline, uh, most robust. Uh, everyone uses black, organic black oil just because it tastes the best, got a rich, oily flavor to it, and it pairs well with everything taste-wise. 
and the uh, hard red winter. Some people use hard red spring too, just depends on your ambient temperature. Um, it's winter in Western North Carolina right now, so house temperature is a little lower than it would be. Uh, so we have to do some things to compensate for that. But both of these require sanitation, uh, or it's easier if you sanitize prior, and both require soaking to um, get the germination process started, or else you get spotty germination rates. Um, so we'll start with sunflower first. That's this guy. Uh, we are going to do, I like using uh, quart jars because I use 150 grams of sunflower. You can use anywhere from 75, 50 to 150, depending on um, how quickly you're gonna go through them. If you're just growing them for yourself or your family, you probably don't need 150 gram, but uh, I'm doing production, so it is how many I can fit in a tray since the entire cost is um, soil and time under lights. So it's how many seeds I can get to reliably germinate in a 10 by 20 tray um, without any disease or mold pressure. So 150 grams is what I found to be about the maximum that I can use um, without running into any significant issues. So we are going to put, I teared this, so it's at zero grams. I'm just gonna dump 150 in here. It's close enough without seeing it. And these are both from True Beef Market, by the way. Uh, I found their batches to be fairly reliable. I uh, don't have to worry about inconsistent germination. Um, I have an affiliate link for them in the description below. Um, I do get a commission if you uh, purchase enough from them, but they also have an awesome rewards program. Uh, so I encourage you to check them out. Mums Spreading Seeds out of Canada also has really good sunflower uh, and wheat, wheatgrass. Johnny's also has um, good products, but uh, shipping for all of them are a little different. So True Leaf I found to be uh, pretty consistent for uh, shipping times and germination, everything you care about for microgreens. Uh, 150 grams of sunflower. This is 34% hydrogen peroxide. I get this at um, Lotus Farm and Garden locally. Uh, just buy, So it's food grade hydrogen peroxide and we're just going to dilute it down. There's, you don't need to use 34%, but it's cheaper to do it that way um, and quicker than buying 5% or 3% at a pharmacy locally. Wear gloves when you do this if you don't have a syringe because 34% will oxidize your skin and turn it white pretty quickly. This is a three milliliter syringe and I use, I was using five milliliters per quart jar, um, but I wasn't getting all the mold off. So now I am up to about nine milliliters per quart jar. So that's directly on the sunflower, and then we are going to mix that, some water, and this makes about a seven to nine percent solution. Just make sure that's coated. A lot of people will do this in a bigger container than a quart jar and put like a brick on it to make sure they stay submerged. Um, this is for demonstration purposes. I just do this under a sink and just swirl it as I go. Uh, and that coats everything fine. You will see, I'll do a close up of this. You'll see white oxidation bubbles happening here. Leave this soaking for about five to 10 minutes with this solution. Uh, I only need to do five minutes, which is why I upped it, just because I get impatient. And a lot of people do this in vats. So if you're doing a um, thousand grams at a time, um, I do about 800. It is much easier if you just have a bigger container and just make a solution and submerge everything. But um, I found this 150 grams per quart to be the perfect uh, way to evenly spread it on a 1020 tray. You'll see when we go to the seating, but I can already see the bubbles happening. So we're just gonna leave this soaking. Next one is wheatgrass. Let's make sure that's teared. Okay, so it's at zero grams. And then this one's a little tricky because wheatgrass loves water. So whenever you go to water it, 
<clears throat> it wicks moisture very quickly and is very, very prone to a white mold that creeps across the bottom of the wheatgrass. It's not pathogenic, but it looks bad. Uh, and you cut high, so you never actually get it. But um, this has to be sanitized for a half hour to, to effectively kill the fungus. We're at 2.30. I do anywhere from 275 to 350 grams, depending on humidity and time of year. Uh, it takes a little longer to grow in the winter than it does in the summer. And the longer things grow, the higher likelihood they have of um, you losing the battle against potential mold. So in the winter, I tend to knock this down a little bit to 275 to 300 grams. It's at 300 right now. In the summer, I'll bump it up to 325, 350. Uh, just because if you're selling it, you want to give plants the most wheatgrass that they can just so they have, if they're juicing it, then get the most ounces out of it. Um, the seed's fairly cheap, so you want to give uh, people the most bang for the buck you can. So the same thing with this. We are going to, if I can find my syringe. This don't hesitate to go heavy on because this definitely has, like regardless of batch, I have not ever not had to fight mold with this. So I'm gonna do 12 milliliters with this. And soak. And the seed doesn't float as readily with the wheatgrass, so uh, you don't have to worry about putting anything on it. But I can already see oxidation happening. You'll see bubbles start forming, and you'll see a white coating on everything. It means it's working. Again, I'll do a close-up of this uh, process. After. A half hour, like I said. I set a timer because I will definitely forget. Um, it's obnoxiously loud, and it'll go off. If you leave it in too long, no worries. Um, if you leave it in way too long, you'll start killing seeds and germination will, will go down. But usually I get around 85 to 90% germination with, with both of these. The sunflower I've been having a little more trouble with in the winter. Uh, it really, really likes, it's a summer crop, sunflower, so it likes uh, very warm root temperatures during germination. Uh, I've usually put a heat mat on in the winter because it really likes 70 to 75. Wheatgrass doesn't care so much, um, it'll sprout. I put it with the peas because it doesn't care too much about cold temperatures because it's a hard winter rye rather than spring rye. Um, so we'll come back to these whenever we're done seeding. That's the only, this is the only two seeds that I have to do extra processes for. Um, so if I seed in the afternoon, I'll have to remember to do this in the morning. Six to eight hours for the sunflower. Um, the wheatgrass I do for a full 24. The wheatgrass gets a half hour um, sanitation bath and then I change out, I soak it, but I change out the water every eight hours. So that's a full pre-germination soak and that helps it um, germinate consistently and quickly. The longer you have any weight or that in a blackout time, the more likelihood you have that mold will take over and you have to deal with sanitizing afterwards, which then you really run into problems with um, hampering the growth of the actual crop. Um, so we'll come back whenever we're doing seeding. So we're at four days after seeding and everything that we seeded, that I seeded on Thursday, so I've been here for about four days, uh, stacked with pressure, is ready to be taken off. And this is just a 10 pound brick just used to apply pressure evenly. So these are uh, broccoli and red acre cabbage. <clears throat> I like these to be a little longer um, just for the specific leaf size that I used to harvest in my mixes. So that is not quite as tall as I would like them to be. They won't grow a ton since most of the energy goes into uh, cotyledon first leaf production. So I'm actually going to put these in a blackout chamber. I don't leave them stacked longer than this just because it does trap the moisture and if you leave it too long you're going to run into possible damping off issues. 
<clears throat> so I'm even trying to pump humidity into this area, which is why they're in a separate area. Um, my house is just very dry this time of year, so I have a humidifier going, and I would really like that to be up to 60% humidity, but um, we'll take what we can get. Now, if you like a more robust, thicker stem and a shorter micro, maybe about an inch, you just put these under lights right now. If that's what your clients or your family like, then go for it. Um, a lot of the mixes I make, and these are for wholesale, I just need a longer stem just to fill weight because uh, they don't care about presentation or aesthetic or stem girth or anything, the way it looks on a plate so much. So I have slightly different approaches for who it's going to in the end product. This is just some basil that I had doing experiments. It's about ready to be put on your lights. So I'm just going to put these in a blackout chamber. And by that I mean I'm just going to flip over a, the tray that will eventually go on the bottom for our bottom water. I'm just going to cover them. And they'll grow about another inch. Uh, and that's in a day. So once the weight is taken off of them, they shoot up much quicker. The sole purpose of the weight is just to ensure even contact uh, with the soil until all the seeds are germinated. Um, once they get past that point, they're just fighting pressure, and that does make the stem a little more robust, um, sort of like if it was fighting wind out in nature, just hardens it a little bit. But if you just want it to gain length quickly, uh, there's no point in, in letting the weight stay on it. I, don't, I didn't used to do this because I didn't have space. So obviously this takes the same amount of space as it would under lights. Um, but if, if you do have a place that's a little darker that you don't need for production, um, it's a little easier to tailor the length to exactly what you want. Once you put it under lights, all the energy is going to get put into um, leaf production, make that color come out, um, and it's gonna stop focusing on height so much. It'll still grow, but it won't uh, shoot up an inch a day like it would in this position. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Some of the, the light's gonna leak into the edges, but as you're harvesting, you can um, grade and sort. We do also have here a uh, P. This is what the P looks like. That's speckled P that we seeded. So that was 300 grams um, and a wheatgrass under it. These are actually going to go right into lights out in the main grow area. You can see the root systems on those things. That's how quickly they grow. You do not want to leave these stacked any longer than you need to because they will start digging into the tray below them like this already has. So this is a wheatgrass on the bottom and I always put wheatgrass on the bottom for that reason because it will dig. The roots grow so quickly it will dig into the seed below it and rip out a chunk. And even the pea starts to do that, just not as quickly. It's the other pea, so they're going out in the lights. <clears throat> and this is a, a little longer than I should have left it, but that's what wheatgrass looks like when it first comes out. And that looks pretty good. You want to inspect this for any major mold spots, even though we sanitized it. Um, and this looks pretty good. So the minute you put it under light, that light will start combating any mold spores. Um, and I usually do have to give this a quick spritz of a milder solution for oxide, maybe 3% just to kill anything lingering. But um, this grows very quickly. So we'll have another, uh, we'll come back to this when it's ready to, to go out. Some people choose to harvest it when it's ready or um, I sell it as living trays just because it stays fresher longer and whomever is juicing it can decide for themselves whenever they want it. So back from this morning, we're gonna do some radish and sunflower. These are just standard 1020 trays. They have 
holes in the bottom since I grow indoors um, and then these will be put on top of 1020 trays without holes that we'll use to bottom water. Um, I do have some Coco Loco, that's the mix that I use. Um, my watering implement of choice is a Dram 1000 hole wand. For smaller seeds it does not move them around as much like amaranth or anything like that. But just for sunflower or radish, basically anything works. So we've got two 1020 trays and this is just a tamper I use to compact the soil. So we'll just get started. Different seed varieties take different or require different depths of soil. Sunflower has pretty deep roots, so you can get away with putting in two inches, which is this entire tray worth of soil. Um, radish does not need that depth, so an inch is fine, um, but soil is definitely one of the costs associated with microgreens. So most people will go about an inch, and they do make trays that are an inch deep uh, that are also a little sturdier. They're also um, double the cost, and I already have these lying around. But if you're just starting up and you don't want to have to deal with brittle trays or harvesting an inch down, they might be worth the investment. Uh, a couple different companies make them, but I've had these for years, and um, there's no reason to, to upgrade just yet. So not a lot of sifting involved. I didn't have to wet this or uh, wait for it to uncompress. Just scooped it out and put it in. And then once it's kind of level, I'm just going to tamp it down, create an even surface. You don't need to do this. If you're just going to spray these and keep them moist afterwards with a spray bottle and you're not planning on stacking them for production, you don't need to do that part. That just uh, maintains a fairly even surface for you to spread them on. Since when we're done, we are going to stack them on each other like that, so you want everything to be fairly flat. Um, after you have a, everything evened out like that, we're just going to water them down. It's been cold here recently. So that's actually probably 55 degree water, which is not ideal for sunflower. And that's why I have this room temperature water here. So one of these will be sunflower. And these were just drained from this morning. They were just sitting there and no other procedure needed. Just spread them fairly evenly. Some people mix these in the soil um, and let them soak and then they just spread them. Um, if you have a, a one inch tray you would just do that over the top um, but I don't so I have to spread them out manually. And then this is my radish, the other common variety. I use red arrow radish which is this bright one and that's from True Leaf Market. Um, it, it's the most robust and it can be used in quite a few mixes because it has a light red hue when it's done uh, and it grows quickly within a week just like the sunflower. The weight of it gets up to a pound per tray depending on how long you let it go. So it's great for um, wholesale and retail if you're just trying to make weight as well. Um, you can harvest it sooner if you need just uh, that petiteness. Spreading on radish isn't too critical because it grows so quickly. Damping off and mold is not an issue. But do still try to spread it so they don't have huge clumps. And that's 30 grams. All of these are, these are little planters you can get at your local uh, farm and garden supply store. I use Lotus in West Asheville. Uh, they're meant for just little tiny succulents or plants to sit in, but I can bend them. Some people use a teaspoon for this process, but I can control the rate of flow pretty 
specifically by doing that. Um, this is a champion radish. That's my uh, wholesale variety because the seed is cheaper. It, there's no stem color and it doesn't grow as quickly. Um, but the cost of the seed is so cheap that it's used to mix into my radish mixes for uh, wholesale. That's a little lower price point than the um, mixes that would go to uh, retail or a restaurant. For sunflower, you can, if these are getting stacked, which they will be later for me, press them down again. And sunflower specifically, because it is a summer crop, this is water that I just got out of the tap and it is hot, not hot like burn hot, but um, at least 70 degrees because I found germination to be poor on sunflower below 70 degrees so I try to give it a little bit of a head start. The radish will be, would be fine if I just watered it in with the outside water that's probably around 55 or 60 degrees but since it's already here and again, 300, or sorry, 150 grams for sunflower, 30 grams for radish. You can go up to 40, you can go down to 15. The smaller the density, and this just goes for all microgreens, the smaller the density, the bigger the leaf. So radish um, will get a fairly large leaf and the first true leaf usually comes out quicker and some people don't like that because it has a real bite to it. Uh, it also doesn't look as petite so some uh, restaurants don't like that first true leaf. Sunflower you really don't want a first true leaf because it gets, um, or sorry, you want it when it barely arrives. Uh, it has full flavor but it gets hairy and the texture changes very quickly. We'll go over that when we uh, see the, the full crop. But this is it for today. I'll be doing uh, everything else on Thursday because my cycle, both of these take a week, so they'll be ready um, seven days from now. We'll check on them in a couple days. And then next up will be pea, wheatgrass, and the brassicas, which I do in the same day because they need three extra days to mature. Just thought of a couple more things as I was finishing up the sunflower. Um, make sure you spread things pretty evenly because um, since there is a mold on them, any extremely tight pockets of sunflower, even anything like this potentially, will lead to a spread um, or a higher probability of that mold spreading. But that's about right. And then if you're stacking these, like I am, feel free to tamp them get down again like that just to press sunflower into the soil. And then I'm gonna water them in with the room temperature water again, just to soak the soil and raise the soil temperature for the next three days. Now, if you're not stacking three, four, um, I wouldn't go any higher than six trays. If you're not stacking them and you're just gonna put this in a dark place and watch it, feel free to just use a spray bottle like this and then just spritz them down like that. Do that when they're in their final place though. So after you move them into wherever they will be growing in darkness, do that again. Moving them will jostle the seeds and once you've sprayed them, you don't want to touch them again. Um, just they're very fragile whenever they're germinating and that's the crucial part for sunflower. Um, you can have of your tray um, outgrow the other half based off of if a certain section was in firm contact with the soil or not. And then uh, just to give you a demo for stacking, if you are going to do that, you don't need to get all the dirt off, but since I'm going inside. If you have any broken trays, put the firm ones on the bottom just so you don't have to worry about anything ripping. And then just try to make sure they're as even as possible. They're not going to be perfectly even, but press down like that, and then we're going to put that a brick. A, uh, I'll put a picture of it right after this. Just a 
paver centered in another tray on top of that just to make sure everything maintains contact with the soil and I am going to just spray this one and do an experiment um, because of ambient temperatures in the winter I'm curious if I get any faster germination if I just spray it and it doesn't have to push the trays above it up. Uh, I'm going to finish with some radish and then I will show you what they all look like. Also, if you're ever running low on soil because you either forgot to prepare enough or roads are treacherous and uh, you can't get to your local store to get any, radish is probably the only crop that I would attempt to grow with minimal layer of soil. Uh, this, this amount is, is normal and fine, but it just occurred to me that um, I've run into that situation a number of times where I had a quarter of a bag left and four or five trays of radish. You can get away with a half inch to a three quarters of an inch. You'll just have to keep an eye on watering whenever you uncover them and you'll just have to water um, more quickly. The nice thing about Coco Loco or just coconut core in general is that it holds water well so a little goes a long way. This isn't good for some crops that damp off quickly like amaranth but for the common ones for this video um, all of the crops pea, sunflower, radish, wheatgrass, and uh, brassicas appreciate a lot of water uh, and drink it up very quickly. Wheatgrass especially, which can be watered twice a day. So um, loco or coconut core works well for all of those. Um, and if you do have to skimp, then just go a little heavier on the water and it will take those and uh, be right back. So we've just finished seeding and I just wanted to show you um, how I stack and um, different techniques I'm trying for colder weather growing just to make sure germination is the same. Uh, this is a heat mat. I use a jump start and just plugged into a regular outlet and you're probably familiar with it from starting peppers in a greenhouse since you usually start in February and the root zone needs to be warmer than February. Uh, this gives about 10 degrees so I'm just going to put the stack of sunflower we just did right on top. Try to make sure it's it's even. And then this is just a 15 pound paver um, placed on plastic or styrofoam just to maintain the even distribution of weight on a sturdier tray. So this is not a standard 1020, this is a super strength. Um, if you do this with a paver, just when you pick it up, I've broken so many. So this is just for this purpose. And that's it. And I'll stay like that for, uh, we're gonna check on them tomorrow. Sunflower specifically, since um, there's so much weight, we rotate the top tray and the bottom tray. And then this is the radish we just did. Um, that can stay there and all I'm going to do is put a slightly lighter paper on it. Uh, you don't even need to do this, you can just put an empty tray, but I have very consistent germination luck with doing that. Um, the experiments we're going to run are with the single sunflower we did. We're not going to cover it, I'm just going to leave it here and I am going to um, spray that down with a spray bottle and we'll see if there's any difference in germination between weighted and unweighted. For now, I'm just gonna put it in blackout uh, so just cover it. Same thing with this radish. Um, I might not even cover it since they germinate so quickly um, or I will just uh, find an empty tray put it on top so it's basically just either put it like this after you've sprayed it down or if you want a little weight 
and then just press it down and there's nothing that would lift it up other than the seeds germinating but I need these guys covered so I will cover it later and we'll come back to all these in about three days see how they're doing um, and we'll uh, we'll rotate as necessary okay I just wanted to go over seed densities for the what I seed on Thursday uh, and this will conclude the varieties that we're going to go over in this video. Um, this is the wheatgrass that we had done on Tuesday, soaked, and it's now germinating. Um, there's tap roots and all of this. I usually do this on Wednesday, a day before I seed it, but um, it was one of the ones we sanitized, so I wanted to do that with sunflower when I sanitized it. We'll go over that when we seed it a little later. Um, this is pea. I usually use speckled pea from True Leaf Market, um, but of course, because I was making a video, I ran out and the order hasn't gotten in yet. In a pinch, this is an Austrian winter pea, and you can usually find this at a local farm and garden store, um, and it works just as well. It's the same density, uh, it germinates just as quickly, it's as reliable. Flavor is different than a speckled pea, and it doesn't look as good, the tendrils in there, but um, this is 600 grams, and that's there. That's two trays worth, so it's 300 grams per tray. Dry is here. I'm gonna soak this for uh, about eight hours and seed it this afternoon. It'll be all the way up to here. So these quadruple in size, it's kind of amazing. Um, some people sanitize those. I've never had an issue with mold. Some people sanitize those with the sunflower, but uh, 300 grams per tray, like I said, and that's dense. You can go, I let them get big because I like the tendrils. If you're going smaller, you can jack up the, uh, the density, maybe to 400 grams. Um, this is, this are our brassicas for the experiment. So this is cabbage and broccoli from True Leaf Market as well. Um, they should have the same densities but they don't in my context because of uh, core. Um, so for broccoli, this is, uh, I use 17 grams and a little spacers again, just easy to pour. For cabbage, I use 21. I found the broccoli, uh, the first true leaves come out a little quicker if I give them a little more space and they're more prone to damping off. So I go a little less dense the red cabbage um, can tolerate higher densities. I've even gone up to 25 grams sometimes. Again, it just depends on how big you want those first true leaves to be. Um, I like a more petite green for my mixes, so I jack up the density. Some people use 30 grams. You can go up to 40 if you have fantastic airflow, you let it dry out, and you want a tiny green, but I like, um, I like the cotyledons and then the first true leaf to pop out whenever I harvest uh, and I still get maybe eight ounces or so, uh, maybe 10 per tray, so just fine. Um, so those are what we're going to be seeding today and uh, I'll rejoin you this afternoon when I go to see everything. We are back with the final seeding. Uh, we're going to do pea. Um, I had sunflower here just for demonstration purposes. Wheatgrass and the we're going to do one um, tray of broccoli and one of red acre cabbage so let's fill our trays the only thing that's different with pea and wheatgrass is they have very robust root systems so if you can give them any more soil uh, they will grow with an inch but the more you give them the less you'll have to water just because the more moisture the soil will retain uh, and they just grow a little better that way so usually if I mistakenly do one or two trays that are too big or uh, too full then those will get the pea and wheatgrass we're just going to do a tray of each to show you. Okay. Tamp down.
like sunflower radish. Again, if you're just doing a tray of each of these and you're not stacking anything, you don't necessarily need to do this if you're gonna be watching them every day and spraying them, but I will be stacking. And it's even a little colder today, so this is very chilly water. The amount of water that you put on uh, is enough just so that they're draining through the holes, so you want them dripping. You don't want just the top layer wet, again, unless you're spraying manually uh, every day and making sure the top layer stays moist, it, uh, just, just drown them. More moisture is better for germination. This is from this morning, um, so this is 600 grams, and I would actually usually um, have this up to here because speckled pea will absorb more water. This is the Austrian winter pea that we did this morning. I'm gonna do half just for a tray. It's about half. I'll do the other half later. Spread it out. They will keep growing as they soak up moisture since I could have soaked them for longer. You can soak that for up to uh, 16 hours. Just make sure you start draining after 8 or so, uh, so they don't sit in water. Uh, wheatgrass will be next, and this was 300 grams. Do it right here. These have actually, I don't know if you can see that, but the taproot has already started. So basically they're, sp they're sprouting. Um, and that's because I actually had them soaking and was rinsing them for two days because I wanted to show everyone the sanitation process. Uh, so I sanitized them back on Monday with the sunflower. So these have actually been soaking for a couple days and have started to sprout. That is not necessary at all. And these will actually probably have to come off uh, a little ahead of schedule just because they're so far ahead. But those two I will tamp down. Pea is, is pretty important to make sure there's weight on it. If you plant this densely and you just spray, they will end up pushing each other up if there are any clumps that are not in immediate contact with the soil. If there's no pressure on them, uh, any, any spots where you had higher density will actually outcompete each other. So you do want to hold them down. And uh, these two will do one of broccoli, if you notice, there's, there's a trench there that I wasn't super um, level for. It, it doesn't really matter. It might germinate a little slower, but in the end, it'll still get cut. Again, that's the benefit of having a, a one-inch uniform tray. You don't have to worry about smoothing things out, but it doesn't matter too much. Then this is the red acre cabbage. So I did 17 grams of broccoli as we went over this morning and 21 grams of red acre cabbage. And that's just what I found. You, people do wide ranges. This is always fun when there's a little wind because the seeds try to go every place. Okay, and then I could do that with with the uh, outside water again, but for a demonstration, this is room temperature water. And if you have any soil on the tamper, like you see here, uh, not a huge deal, but if you can get it to wash off, that'll make your life easier whenever you go to pull trays off, because you won't have any soil hanging on to the shoots, especially wheatgrass or something that people are not going to wash before they use, or well, they might, but I'm assuming people just cut and juice. 
I'm just trying to raise the soil temperature. That's why I'm spending so much time doing this by five degrees or so, bring it up to high 60s, low 70s. All right, that's good enough. Okay, and then for stacking, this is one of the more important stacking points because uh, I run into this every time I forget. Wheatgrass should always go on the bottom. The roots grow so vigorously that they will definitely dig into whatever is below them. Uh, I've, even though pea and wheatgrass both grow quite quickly, if I forget and put the wheatgrass on top of the pea, whenever I go to pull it out, I will end up ripping chunks of the newly sprouted pea out. Um, pea roots are just a touch before the wheatgrass, so there might be a little stickiness, but I stack them together because they germinate at the exact same time. These guys take a little longer, um, so they can go together. I'm not going to stack them right now because I have a couple more to do. Just wanted to show everyone. Uh, and percent humidity from this morning and drop 10 degrees. This is perfect. Uh, that humidity could be 20% higher and it'd be good. But uh, as far as inside heating goes, I'm okay with that. So this is the stack of pea and wheatgrass. Wheatgrass on the bottom again. I put another tray of pea on top. Um, you could stack this up to... Five. I don't know that anyone goes higher than six trays um, unless you want to rotate like um, I did with the sunflower earlier, but um, that's what I have just because that's my demand. It's very low wheatgrass demand in the winter usually because it's, it's juice bars aren't as popular, I would say. We are going to put a weight on that because uh, it, it's advisable for pee, like I said, just to push them down. And this is one of the heavier pavers. And I'm just gonna plop that on there. It's level. And the, you'll probably hear things dropping. Um, that's water still draining through the trays. If you're inside, not on cement or some sort of surface that can get wet, like if you have a wood floor, make sure there's a tarp below anything germinating. Uh, because things will still be dripping occasionally. Um, so that will stay like that. We'll check on that a couple days. And then uh, this would be the red acre cabbage. And I'm sorry, this is the cabbage. This is the broccoli. I do an extra tray of cabbage. I did four trays of red acre cabbage, three of broccoli total. Um, those are the bulk of a lot of my uh, winter mixes. Brassicas just are a little more reliable than the summer crops. <clears throat> so for the red acre cabbage, it has quite a bit of um, germination pressure, so it has no problem pushing up one of these, so to speak. This is a lighter paper than that. That's a full-on, like, half cinder block. This is a, this is probably, like, eight pounds. So we're just going to dump that there. Also, when you're done using the, um, the weighted trays, Make sure they're sanitized just because they are in contact with some seed they may uh, potentially have fungus on them. So with anything that com comes into contact with a seed or moisture or both, make sure you're sanitizing them and just have a solution of, I have a, a bottle of peroxide, 5% um, just laying around. It's not enough to hurt anything um, that's trying to grow, but just make sure that you spray the bottom of that and then let it off gas. Um, this is the broccoli, and we are going to put, um, broccoli doesn't have as much germination pressure for some reason, and if you don't have a paver and you're not doing that method, it is perfectly fine if you just put another tray on top, and this is actually an experiment that I'm doing. This is half a tray of uh, ruby streaks mustard and then some red pok choy. I'm trying to make a, a tray with half and half just to... Um, see if they grow at the same rate, It'd be easier to, to make the mix that way. You can just put that right on top, like that. That's plenty of pressure for broccoli. That's a lot of trays on the bottom one. Um, and then I do want that to be blacked out. So you can either flip it over like we have been doing and then spray, or if you don't want to spray, you can just put that and then just press it down the moisture that's there will make it stick. I've never had to check that again. Just don't touch it again. Um, but 
that is plenty of pressure for it. To, and you'll notice whenever any germination occurs because there's actually no weight on it and it'll just lift the tray up and then you can spray, flip it over if you just want to lengthen it. But to make sure that the seeds remain in contact with the soil, uh, that's absolutely fine. And I think that's it for today. About three and a half actual days after seeding. This is the radish that just has a blackout dome. Uh, this is close to being ready um, if you want it at that size. Again, pretty inconsistent germination. There's some in there that have barely grown. But if you're just eating them for yourself, this is ready to go. Uh, so it's three and a half days. Sunflower, still not doing a whole lot. Um, there are some more of the tap roots are out now. So better germination, but no real growth yet. I'll cover those back up in a little bit. And then these are the radish stacked. Uh, ones on the top are still pushing. The ones on the bottom are actually doing a little better. Consistency wise, they're starting to crack out the edges. This is the argument against um, stacking. So the ones that don't have um, immediate weight on them are definitely growing a little faster, but that's why we're running an experiment because the germination is uneven with the height, if you can see that. And then the stacked sunflower. Same thing. Um, a little bit better germination because they had constant contact with the soil. But uh, same same stage, and then um, our key tap roots are out and they're starting, and then the wheat grass, if you can see on the edge there, has started um, popping out. But those won't be ready until uh, usually middle or uh, beginning of next week. So those have got a uh, three more days and might have had a little too much moisture but this is why i don't do this process uh, for sunflower compared to the ones that are stacked that looks much better these are actually i'm going to uncover these give you a little time lapse of me putting them under lights right after this wheatgrass is popping and the pea doing just fine. That'll be another day before I uncover it. And our broccoli crop is wonderful. And the red acre cabbage is right behind it. it goes a little slower. And I'm going to uncover those and put them in a blackout dome since germination is great. radish and um, I haven't brought sunflower in yet but I like to put them under their final destination just so <clears throat> I don't have to move them again this is the one that was obviously um, under the blackout dome the entire time and the rest were I just unstacked um, so that <clears throat> um, I'm gonna put that over there under lights I just wanted to show you and then these guys I just put there uh, the bottom trays that will be going on the bottom to be watered over the top of them and uh, I'll let them lengthen for probably about a day. So that's just going there. I like to put them under the, the lights um, and not turn the lights on yet just so when they're ready I can just flip the trays, water, flip the lights on. <clears throat> if you're doing two production cycles a week, so if you harvest twice a week, you might not have this option because those lights will be in use and there will be trays there. In that case, you can just leave them stacked for longer. But since I have the space, uh, it's winter and I'm only doing one harvest a week right now, <clears throat> that makes life easier. And the other thing is when you move the trays, radish almost never has this issue, but uh, check for damping off spots. Any place you seed it a little too densely, just make sure you don't see any uh, mold uh, creeping across the top or any spaces that are rotting and use that opportunity before you start watering 
um, to either physically remove those sections or just spritz them with a vinegar or peroxide. Just wanted to give everyone an update from the grow room. Uh, these will be the brassicas from last week, so we wouldn't have actually seeded these together. These would have been the ones from the previous Thursday. They've been under lights and they are doing just fine. Uh, this is harvestable size, so they will be harvested in another two days, um, but you can take them at any time once they get to the stage. Wheatgrass looks great and that will stay fresh for um, probably about a week after I sell it to someone. Pea shoots are a perfect size. I'm gonna let them get a little taller because I these are mostly for wholesale. But uh, if you're selling or just eating them yourself, um, the flavor at this stage is perfect. And this is over a pound per tray. Um, as for the radish, this is what we brought in yesterday to lengthen. And that is about an inch above the tray line. And the others will be the same. Yep. <clears throat> so I will... Uh, Actually, I'm going to flip the lights on them right now because that's the right size. I like some of them to be a little more petite uh, because I sell to um, restaurants for some of them and some of them I want to be a little longer. Um, but just an update on everything growing. Okay, so we've reached the end. Just wanted to give a quick uh, tour of what the average of things should look like. This is all the common varieties that we've been going over uh, seeding, watering from start to finish. This is seven to 10 days, depending on the crop. We have wheatgrass, uh, the hard red winter rye we've been working with. This will yield about 12 to 14 ounces. I'll just sell this living tray for juice bars or uh, whomever to, to cut and juice themselves. Lasts longer this way, stays fresher. Uh, in the summer that you can get another um, four to six ounces out of it. Uh, this is the red arrow radish we've been working with. You can see that nice red hue on the stem. This can uh, be close to a pound, so 12 to 14 ounces, 16 in the summer if I let it go another couple days, but this is about right for restaurant size. Black oil sunflower, of course. Um, again, this would be probably a third bigger and denser in the summer, but uh, winter germination is difficult. This is the perfect... Uh, leaf configuration to cut it at just as the first true leaf starts poking out. I'll do a couple close-ups after. Uh, speckled pea looks really good. Uh, this will definitely be a pound. Um, in the summer I can get usually 20 ounces, a little more maybe, um, but the tendrils are, are coming out on this and it looks great. Uh, we have the red acre cabbage there and the Waltham broccoli. All the seeds are true leaf market out of Utah. And like I said, I have an affiliate link in the description if you want to order some seeds and uh, help support the channel. Um, I have this knife that I've been holding just because for some of these finer micros, um, I love this knife. This is from Johnny's, not an affiliate, but it's just a good knife. Hyper sharp and very precise. Um, I use a bigger Japanese style kitchen knife for just mowing things down like the pea so you can just slice without having to think about it. Some people use hedge trimmers. Uh, I know Micro Green Farmer does. I got a lot of advice from him when I was starting up. Um, that works too if you have something that it can fall into. Uh, there are plenty of tools. Um, Johnny's has one. Um, the Greens Cutter basically that has the green velvet uh, basket in the back and you just attach a, has a saw on it and you just put a drill on it and just shove them under and it mows them down. I don't like that with these 1020 trays because they're higher. You can adjust size, but um, a lot of the color, like especially on these red acre cabbage is near the base, near the soil. So when I'm making mixes where the length is not important for the restaurant or the chef or the market, um, I will cut maybe a half inch above the soil to get all of that color. Uh, same thing with the broccoli, if it's under uh, different lights, there's a purple hue that comes out and with the red arrow radish uh, especially, there's, there's a nice red hue at the bottom there. With any other variety that you may do, um, an amaranth or a beet, all of the color 
is popping at the bottom. So you want to get close to the soil. Obviously, um, if you're washing, it's a different story. You can get close to the soil. Um, I'm very careful. I harvest half inch, three quarters of an inch above the soil usually, uh, and just goes in a uh, clamshell. Um, I'll do an entire video on harvesting, but this is about what you can expect. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Um, or better, there's a link tree link in the description with all my social media. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. That's what I actually check on. So feel free to leave a comment. But if you have uh, questions, there is a vibrant community of micro growers on Instagram, which is great to see. Um, Canada and US uh, answering questions uh, within a half hour a lot of time. So feel free to reach out. Uh, thanks for watching this. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. I hope you found it of some value. Uh, if you would, please share this with your friends, especially anyone who's trying to grow microgreens. Let's see how many people we can get growing. Uh, I'm a big fan of decentralized food systems, so uh, more microgreens out there, the better, in my opinion. Um, if you wanted any way to support me, just to help me create more content, um, get supplies, better equipment, um, for more experiments, there is a donate link in the description below. It brings you to my website. It's just a PayPal donation. Um, like I said earlier, I am a True Leaf Market affiliate, so if you need bulk seeds, they are definitely the way to go. Great shipping times, pretty decent prices there at Salt Lake. That's also in the description. Um, there's a link tree if you want to get a hold of me with all my social media. Um, and if you don't want to have a video in front of you when you're seeding or just figuring out how to do this, if you go to uh, my website, which is cultivated-change.com forward slash microgreens, all the way at the bottom there is a um, PDF you can download with a, a paper version of the most important steps that we would have gone through in the video, seeding, um, densities, uncovering, all the main steps, and you can figure out, just use this for reference in between. Um, if, you, if you like to seed outside and just have something in front of you instead of holding your phone. And uh, we're gonna try to do about a video a week on specific varieties, uh, more experiments I'm doing, uh, a little more tricky, um, nuanced, uh, either soil tips, mold prevention tips, disease prevention tips, things like that. So um, hit the like button. Also, just to let me know uh, what type of content you guys would prefer and uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you.